If you come from the part of Nigeria that I come from, I come from Kaduna State, and I come from the southern part of Kaduna State, and I don't know what demanding is because uh, we've been demanding for ever since the Kaduna State was created. Yeah. Okay. We've been demanding from successive governments even a sign of physical presence. Okay, there isn't across the whole of Southern Kaduna not a single sign of federal presence. So I take you, I hear you about demand, but you know, my friend, the Bishop of uh, Nsuka, uh, whom, with whom I we share a lot, Bishop Ona, he told me a story about uh, the common story in the bulls. That uh, the animals gathered, I don't know whether it was an elephant that died, and uh, they gathered to share the elephant. And the tortoise from somewhere said, I must get the thigh of this elephant. And uh, they looked at him and the, the lion said, Please excuse, who, who made that demand? And they said it is tortoise. He said, tortoise, you are asking for the tie of, if you get the entrails, that's what we're going to give you. The entrails, that's what we're going to give you. So tortoise said, actually, that's what I wanted. But if I didn't ask for the tie, I would not even get the entrails. <laughs> Some of us have, you know, labor started asking for the tie. By asking for, you know, my friends in Lebo ask for the tie. They ask for a one million naira minimum wage, and uh, the president has already committed himself to solving the problem. And he, as he said in his speech today, has come from a background of Lebo, and I think with himself and people like Adam Soshimole and a few Lebo activists, our problems should be on the way to being solved. But let me read out a quotation which will surprise you. It's a text. It says, it is true that there is worldwide economic recession. However, in the case of Nigeria, its impact was aggravated by mismanagement. The situation could have been avoided if the legislators were alive to their constitutional responsibilities. The legislators were preoccupied with determining their salary scales, fringe benefits, and unnecessary foreign travels. As a result, our inability to cultivate the financial discipline and prudent management of our economy, we have come to depend largely on internal and external borrowing to execute government projects. The corrupt, inept, and insensitive leadership in the last years have been a source of immorality and impropriety in our society. We shall do our best to settle genuine payment of salaries to which government is committed, including the lack, I mean the backlog of workers' salaries. Please, I, I will give one million dollars, which I don't have, but I will give you. If anybody can tell me who said this, let me not, my, the clock is ticking. But this is taken from a speech delivered by General Buhari on the 31st, 31st of December, 1983, 41 years ago. I'm not disappointed that you don't remember because Nigerians don't remember anything. And that is why we are, we are this is why we are where we are today, we don't remember anything. We don't remember anything. We are celebrating the fact that we've had 25 years of quote-unquote uninterrupted in the, uh, democracy. And we are anxious about the things we've not done. And we're also anxious about why we've not succeeded. The American elections are coming up in November. 
And there's a lot of anxiety, perhaps even more than there is in Nigeria. And yet, it is exactly 245 years since America elected their first president in 1789. It is to make the point that democracy is not an event. Democracy, the way we understand it, I mean, there's a lot of anxiety across the board, and I think they speak, all the speakers have said what needs to be said. There's no need, except for me to try and just take you back a little bit, because I prefer to take a fairly historical view, because too many of us are too careless about our expectations. And it's legitimate to have expectations, but those expectations must be founded on reality. Tom, Professor Huntington, the famous American professor, was actually my teacher. Uh, he did say something that there were three waves of democracy. Democracy in the 19th century, which is the wave that took America and other countries, and then the post-World War II wave, which took most of the countries in Europe. And then, of course, the third wave happened in 1970 that saw Africa, Asia, and Latin America becoming democratic, or at least in embracing the principles of democracy. But as you see across Africa, uh, democracy has been manifested in different shapes and in different forms. And like Speaker Dogara said, Churchill's statement, the worst form of government except for others. But I think what is missing in our conversation is that unlike Europe, where the principles of democracy were founded on the thinking of several philosophers, from Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, Hegel, John Locke, the whole lot. Our democracy has paid very little attention. It's not been the subject of a very serious intellectual. We've been involved in intellectual conversations about democracy. But modern Western liberal democracy, as we understand it today, benefited extensively from the work of people like St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas. It is also quite significant that uh, Joe Biden, even in his presidential address, had to quote St. Augustine. And it means, therefore, that it is the teachings and the, and the philosophies and the theology of some of these scholars that laid the foundation for what we call democracy today. Unfortunately, our democracy is in recession, is in decline, precisely because it is evident to us that what we are working with it's not something that has come from our own historical, cultural, or even anthropological experiences. But having said that, even after embracing democracy, it must be clear to us that there are different ways of talking about democracy. There are different models of democracy. We, the British left us with the Westminster parliamentary system. We quarreled with it, and then we decided we wanted the American presidential system. Of course, I was secretary of the Political Reform Conference in 2005 when the discussion went on about term limits. And there was so much anxiety, almost like there are the kind of anxieties that Nigerians have. You know, we have a very, Nigerians can't think beyond a particular period. Right now, our obsession with politics is 2020, I mean 2027. That's where, if you tell Nigerians about what might happen in 2040 or 2050, Nigerians don't want to hear that. So all our plotting, all our scheming is what is going to happen in 2027. Um, I read a book early in the year, which I think if you can find it, please read it. The title of the book is The 100-Year the Marathon. Now, it's a, it, the subtitle is China's Secret Plan to do Rule the World. And it's a fascinating book because it talks about the fact that after the Communist Party won elections in 1949, the Chinese now decided to put a plan in motion in which the plan is 100 years old, from 1949 to 2049. And China's plan within that period of time is to be the greatest nation in the world. I don't have to tell you where China is now. It was I, very interesting. I flew air peace yesterday, and it was very nice to see a Chinese air hostess, uh, speaking very, 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 very good Nigerian English. Uh, but it tells you that if we are going to go on the path of democracy, there needs to be some kind of clarity about really what are we looking at. 
Now, while we were debating term limits, for example, I remember that time Tony Blair was prime minister. If you remember, he was prime minister for 10 years. Margaret Thatcher was prime minister for 11 years. Lee Kuan Yew, about, you know, people speak eloquently about, about uh, uh, Singapore. But Lee Kuan Yew conducted, became president, I think, 1968 or 69 or thereabout, a prime minister. And he remained so consistently. He conducted elections and won elections. The party he founded, People's Action Party, is still the party that is in power today. Party is still in power. Now, what people don't remember about Liu Kuan Yew, and everybody, and I'm, you know, the speaker made uh, mention of, of that country. But it also speaks to other issues. Because Liu Kuan Yew studied in Cambridge and got a first class. His son, who just stepped down now as prime minister, went to Cambridge, he got a first class. Liu Kuan Yew's wife went with him to, you know, to, to Cambridge. She also got a first class. So the quality of his imagination, and immediately he became prime minister, the first thing he did was to go to Harvard, where young people like uh, Kissinger were just young lecturers. He established a relationship with them. And from there, they led him to Washington. But one of the critical things that Liu Kuan Yew did, which I think should speak to the reason why democracy is failing so badly in Africa and across, I speak of Africa, is that Liu Kuan Yew identified the public service as the most important vehicle of governance. And so if you got a first class in, in Singapore, you went to the public service. If you did very well, you went to the public service. And he so incentivized civil service that he became the place to go to. So their salaries of civil servants in Singapore was 80% more than what people were getting in the private sector. Now in Nigeria, if somebody wants to marry you, your daughter and comes you, your daughter tells you, eh, my, my, the guy I want to marry is working in the ministry. I'm sure you can know that is a no-brainer. It's most likely your father, prospective father-in-law will look the other way. So it is not so much, and those of you, I'm sure, you know, Fashola, um, I always like to call you Dr. Fashola. I think you eminently deserve more than that. They will speak to some of those people, those, those people who have had the experience and the exposure. There is not so much the kind of thing that government wants to do. Every governor, every president is full of good intentions. The question is, what is the quality of the container, the quality of the conveyor belt for carrying the good wishes of government? And because we have a thoroughly corrupt civil service, the result is that no matter the vision, no matter the dream, because we tend to focus on what president is not doing, what governor is not doing, we are forgetting the quality of those who are conveying the intentions of government. So it's to make the point that when somebody like Lee Kuan Yew stayed for that, he conducted elections. He won elections over a 30-year period. Putin is over 20 years president. We don't know when he's going to go. Uh, Museveni, we are celebrating 25 years. Museveni has been in power for about 38 years now. He started in 1986. We have no idea when he's going to go. Nigerians are quite shameless, especially the Nigerian elite. I don't know what Nigerians were thinking when they started visiting South Africa for holidays. And they still go to South Africa for holidays. And they are probably have houses in South Africa. But which South Africa are you adoring? Is it the one that was built by apartheid or the South Africa of today? Nigerians are heading to, you know, the criminals have so much money. They will go to anywhere they hear there is a good place. Nigerians are now shamelessly going to Rwanda. And they come back telling stories about Rwanda. But which Rwanda do you want to be in? Is it the Rwanda in which you, cannot, you can contest elections here in Nigeria? You can fight? You can go to the Supreme Court? Tell me who has stood in front of, of, of Paul Kagame and is still standing to talk. So we need to make a point about what exactly do we want. Paul Bia has been, prime minister, has been president of Cameroon since 1982. Mbasogo has been president of, since 19, for 43 years now, he's still president. Sasso Ngueso is still there since 1979. He's been in, in, in power for 38 years. I'm therefore making the point, and I think somebody made the point, that there's a correlation between a certain kind of stability and development. It depends, though. But the volatility in our system suggests that we need to be a little bit more calm. And I think, again, the speaker before me made that point very well. 
So the situation in which we are all quarreling with the quality of the tools that we are working with doesn't address the issue. Professor Soludo is here. He's been governor of Central Bank, now governor. At, fortunately, there are no governors in the Catholic Church. Otherwise, maybe from here you will be. <laughs> but he has enough experience. To be, and he's going to address some of the issues that need to be addressed. But Martin Wolf, who was, um, he worked with the Financial Times. He's written a very beautiful book, The Crisis Around Liberal Democracy. I mean, liberal capitalism. And he makes the point that the beauty about economy is that it's a marketplace. And a marketplace is beautiful because it's a place of choice. But the truth of the matter is that when Adam Smith made the point about the invisible hand of the market, well, only spirits are invisible. But it also speaks to the fact that the market cannot be, the invisible hand cannot regulate, you know, I mean, the market. Please, do you, can, do you have the video? Can you play that video of uh, Mr. Gecko? The, uh -huh. Please, just listen a minute to this video. Just I love this video. It's a film called Wall Street. And it speaks about what happens because the collapse of the world economy in 2008, uh, very, it, it, it has left very interesting dimension. But one of the very interesting things is that Wall Street, which is really the temple of the world, economy of the world, is that after this world collapse of the world economy, hundreds, millions of Americans became you know, homeless. Its impact reverberated across the world. But the very interesting thing is that nobody, not one single person from Wall Street is in prison. Now, Michael Douglas there talks about the glory of greed. And the issue that the speaker spoke about, it, the challenge for many countries in Africa, beginning with Nigeria, is how do you restrain the greed of the political elite? Not only the political elite, but the, the greed and the appetite of ordinary Nigerians. Because it is feeding this beast that has made it impossible for this country to grow. And of course, you know, when people talk about labor asking for 60,000 naira, government says it's unable to pay. Well, economists talk about what they call incentive compatibility. We cannot talk about people being corrupt when it is clear to us that <laughs> the, the, the incentives for, being, for doing the right thing doesn't exist. Now, the driving, the, the, you know, the conflict around the, you know, the discussion of you know, what economic choices to make, what, are we to be socialists or are we to be capitalists? Nigeria is neither. And it's not a choice of either or. And China has demonstrated very clearly to us that we don't have to make those kind of choices. So, beloved, I believe you heard what Bishop Kuka has to say, and he says a lot of things in this video that, honestly, this is not somebody that is just speaking out of speaking sake. This is someone that is speaking out of experience and a whole lot. You show that, yes, this person has actually gone far. He has made research on his own and all that. And there are a lot of things he says in this video that are very, very mind-blowing and all that. Even me, myself, I didn't know that such things existed. It was when after he spoke and I decided to look some things up on the internet and I was like, okay, this is how it is and all that. And there are a lot. There are a lot of things he says. Nigeria don't even clearly has a plan like a future plan and all those things the current plan and what everybody is actually thinking right now is 2027 and i agree with him because that is what me too i'm thinking that the situation of nigeria right now is going to be over in no time it's going to be over in 2027 probably when a new president emerge and all that and then also he talks about the um, people surrounding the current um, president and all that, that they are also part of the growth of the nation. They are part of the affairs of the nation and all that. So he talked greatly in this video that actually blew my mind. And I mean, myself, I was actually short of words when... <clears throat> I heard what he has to say sorry about that when i heard what he has to say and all that and he says that the growth of a nation does not depend on the government elite and government 
subord- subordinates and a whole lot of things and all that and i begin to think that yes actually this person is actually saying the truth and all that is actually making sense is making some things come to light is giving something clarity and all that and i'm like okay so how are we going to do how are we going to navigate through this aspect or this part of life and all that and make sure that a lot of things go in place but one thing you need to know is that our nigerian system or government system it took corrupt to the point that all they are doing they don't have a goal or a plan or all that and then he read a speech belonging to Muhammad Buhari 41 years ago so imagine okay you 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 just give speech you don't have a plan to bag it up because if you have a plan to bag it up you give a speech about that so let's say when he emerged as a president of nigeria 2015 again it the speech was about 20 something years old i be uh yeah 20 something years old and then you couldn't do anything i be yeah 20 something years old by back then around 20 something yes see sorry i be 30 something years old and then you come you rule for eight years there was no change then all we faced was that the economic of nigeria went from like this to like that and then at the end of the day you expect that you're a true leaders and all that i know a lot of people were like oh this one is actually coming for revenge and all that for what the elite did to him for what godfathers and all that did to him since he has the mandate he has a mantle in his hand being the president of nigeria we are from 2015 to 2023 he can do the undo and all that and i'm like wow this is very very interesting because this man never did anything so i i feel like all our politician all our political leaders like um presidents governors like down to the lower class you could ever think of they are all just there for selfish gain and all that probably to control the world and all that for the world to be in their palm they can do the undo and all that that is what me i just see because they are not there they don't have any vision they don't have any plans they don't even have any goal towards the growth and changes in nigeria okay just imagine the book that he talks about chinese a hundred years plan and that plan is gonna fulfill finish in 2027 and then what are you not telling me hundred years plan and they have actually executed their goal Oh, that is just it. See, when a nation wants to grow by, you don't have to think about your selfish interests and all that. But I feel like we Africans, and especially Nigerians, all we think of it has to, to, to enrich our pocket. It's hard to make changes in our life, in, in the life of our family and all that. We don't even think about the nation at all. Every agenda that I feel that every president in Nigeria comes with is just for them to grow. I, I would say the ones in the past 20 something years actually had a little vision and they actually did the little they can as of that time but not knowing that see every everybody faced economic crisis when it came down to say that oh this person is facing this that person is facing that you understand but this one hey jesus 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 they don't have any plan since they felt like the country is corrupt enough what they do is to send their family bunch of their family outside the country then what they intend to do at the end is to um, is to make sure that their family are okay they are rich for generation to generation if the country like make it collapse if they like make the hand them over to any other colonial masters come and rule again that one is none of their business by that time their family is well settled they are in one lovely country and all that and i'm like wow this is very 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 interesting this is very interesting because i don't really know what is happening but see honestly sometimes when you start to listen to some of all those people you start to have an insight of what is actually happening around you because a lot of people don't have plan when they come they take powers or let's say ministers governors senate and president in africa in nigeria let me talk about my own country they don't have any plans and goes towards the country the growth or anything it's just for people that actually put them in power as you're going i'm going to fight behind you i'm going to be with you from beginning to the end but one thing i want you to do for me is that when you get there give me opportunities allow me to do my do and all that and that is what they are doing 
And there are some few things he actually says in this video that are just mind blowing. He says that Nigerians has houses in South Africa. They go to South Africa for vacations and all that. Everybody is guilty of charge. We don't have a home, but we travel over there and all that to feel like, oh, want to get away and all that. And you say, how? Ah, when did that start? And that is when I start to look some things up and I'm like, wow, this is seriously happening. What is going on? Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So what do you expect us to do at this point? What do you want us to like think about when, when you, you, you come across things like this that opened your inner mind and you start to think about some things you see that, okay, these people are actually superior over you. Then you start thinking that actually these, thing, these people don't have anything on you. All they have is just their selfish interests and needs and all that. Sometimes I just feel like this is our democracy of a thing. It's just a scam. Because if it's not a scam, there is nothing that you people are actually doing. You cannot be celebrating 25 years of democracy when you can't even settle government workers and all that. Then he gave a story about a bishop that told him that when a, a particular uh, animal, a set of animal gathered, and then uh, uh, I think an elephant died, then uh, Toto said that, oh, me, I want the the ties of this elephant and then they start shut up how can you get a tie of this elephant we are going to give you so 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 part and they say yes actually that is what i want if i didn't request for the biggest part you people will not actually give me labor cannot say that oh pay one million to uh government workers in state local government and all that no but they actually put their price high so that whenever you people bargain to a certain level or to a certain amount then they can agree on something but no the president is proving that he he does not have if they cannot take it let them go and sit down and all that i'm i'm like this is not fair honestly it's not fair it's not fair to all of us it's not fair to a lot of people because how do you intend for family to feed how do you intend for family to go about their day-to-day -day activities with the way the country has become do you know what it means to cook a pot of soup? So a whole lot of things. What these people are asking for is not much. You people cannot give them that amount, but at least beat it to a certain level or beat it to a certain amount. You cannot just say that you don't have, if they can't take what you have, then let them go sort themselves out. That you don't have anything to give apart from 60k, a be 62k. Ah, Jesus Christ, what are, what are we even thinking? Please, if you're not going to give them that 600, beat it around 300, 200, two something. Beat it or have that price. You cannot say you want to give 10% of what they are asking for. Come on, Mr. President. So all these things, when he start to throw light and all that, all we do is just to demand from our government and they don't even meet our demand. So sometimes we even forgot what it means to exercise our rights and all that in the country. When you come out to protest and all that, they put you down. So what do we do? What do you want people to do or what do you want people to survive on? Are they going to eat air or drink air? Are they going to live in forests or what? I remember they said that if Lagos is not conducive for you, you should pack your bag and go back to your community or to your village where you're coming from. So how do you intend for people to walk around that? Sometimes I begin to ask myself some certain kind of question that even me myself, I don't have answers to. I just think, I just ask, and then that's just it. Sometimes let's look at some things. When... All these things and sometimes when we come out to say that okay we want to come out for our voices to be heard there are a lot of things we need to also put in place because let's think outside the bus let's not think of facing the country right now or with what is happening how we should find a solution out of it let's think about years to come if we cannot set a goal for a very long period of time let's set goals for 10 years and all that and see what we achieve at the end of the day what is happening? A whole lot of things are just going south. Our oil, oh yeah, it has to go outside for it to be processed and all that. Everything has to go outside for it to be processed, then bring back to us. 
as the finished product. And when we have the capacity, the equipment, the funds to actually do these things ourselves. But no, we're not going to do that. So what, what do we intend to leave for our kids? When all these political officials, they have been in power for years, they are moving from one position to another. You have secure, you know, when, when you are in such position, you have secure another position for yourself. Or when you fall from the high and mighty, which is the presidency, you have secured yourself into one elite position in the Senate or in the minister or something, something, so that you can fall back on. And they say they are saving for rainy days. They are planning for rainy days. That means they don't even have plan or agenda to actually fix the country anytime soon. Let's suffer. Let's, like, whatever we see, let's take it. That is what is actually happening right now. Because if it's not that, then tell me. Explain. (laughs) Sometimes uh, I just see Nigeria and I'm like, God, I feel like crying. Because it's very, very disturbing. Because you don't even know what you think. You don't even know what you say. You don't even know what to believe at the end of the day. And which is very, very bad. I just pray that God help us. And God see us true. But some of all these things is not by prayer, it's not by kabashing and all that. We have been praying. It's not like we've not been praying. It's not like we've not been asking God. There's something a bit that I mean I actually see at this point that I'm going to say honestly, I run down with him. See, God does not consign himself with the affairs of man. When election comes, you are praying that God should choose a candidate for you and all that. That is the affair of man. You men have to be in charge of it and say, okay, let's put our heads together and make sure that we bring this person into power. But it seems that your vote doesn't even count in some certain part of the world anymore. Especially in Africa. Because it's who they want to put in power, they want to put in power. Some people are in power for over 42 years, 30-something years, 20-something years, 70-something jesus and i'm saying that and we say we're gonna grow <laughs> grow to where how when somebody will be in power for that amount of years you cannot even stand in presence of some people and talk or like the way we nigerians can come out and drag our politicians and all that Hey, in some countries, you can't even try it. In Africa, yeah, I'm not talking about the Western world or Asia and all those things. I'm talking about Africa, yeah. You can't. You can't open your mouth to say pin. Because if you say pin, they are going to silence you. Bam, pin, too. So all those things. So I feel like all heads should come together at this point. What we should do is to have a plan. And they have an agenda towards that plan. And then create something that works for us to be able to achieve that. And all these things is not going to be the politicians alone. It's going to be also the citizens. And mind you, before you became a politician, you are a citizen of that particular nation. Because that is what me, I just feel like we should do at this point. That is our only way out. Because we cannot be thinking about getting our pockets fat and all that. And you see, they have created this mindset for us that corruption is just a non in Africa or in this part of the world we found ourselves. Because when you also get into power and you have that controversy over some certain kind of thing, you intend to abuse it or misuse it. Because you see anybody that, hmm, if I'm given the chance to become a president of Nigeria. Me, I'll steal money. Me, I'll steal money. Me, I'll steal money. I'll put all my family members and friends in uh, positions and all that. Then I'll just be pumping money abroad. When you hear a lot of citizens speak, when they say, if you are given to be in this position as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Some people even went as far as to say that, me, I want to eat good food. Okay, that see, you won't blame them. Okay, labor is proposing for so 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 amounts. Look at how much they are using to renovate the Aso Villa, the presidential distance office for him and his vice, travel expenses, wardrobe, feeding expenses, and groceries, and all those things. Miscellaneous, then animal to feed their 
all those damn war 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 dogs do you know how much it costs and then you say you want to offer a full grown woman or man 62,000 to be able to cater for family of five and all that when you tell they say they're not asking a pop to born any year you people are just giving bet any year Mm-mm. they should not give vet are they not working hard bless the person they walk like jackie they eat like ant that is how it is in nigeria but these people they fund their trips and all that with the nation's money and you feel like you you can't explain how many trillion now all use renovate Haba. some things we we just give deaf ears blind eye to some certain kind of things and feel like it's okay it's a norm corruption see let's tr- let them try to put an end to this corruption I feel like a movement that is going to come again or a process that is not going to come again. It should be way stronger so that some of all these people can be in pitch drop. It's not just the gov- the government or the, 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 the president that is the problem. A whole lot of people around him, the lawmakers and everybody, every hand needs to be on deck. We, we can't think of going abroad, seeking greener pasture and all that. We, we can make that greener pasture in our nations and live comfortably. But no, it's not good. We have to go outside. We have to go and do Bambia last slaves and all that for some people. Do you know that every part of the world is built for certain kind of people, colors and all that? That is how it is. But no, we don't understand that to wear monkey jacket, mess no day for, uh, we don't feel for few achieved already. That is what we believe in. But some of all these things, let's look into it and also think outside the bus or think for ourselves sometimes. Because honestly, the government are not willing to do anything for us. Let's us also have long-term plans for ourselves and also be able to execute it and make sure. But one thing with us Africans is that we want to take advantage of every situation. Let dollar rise small. You hear prices of commodity going up, blowing the roof and all that. How do we grow? And tomorrow we'll blame it on government. We too, we are corrupt. That is just the truth. Let's forget about government. We are also corrupt. You go the year prices of things don't triple. Come on, let's do better. So, guys, that is just the video I decided to bring your way today. And please, please, before I go, please, if you have not subscribed, kindly subscribe, comment, like, share with family and friends so that I don't miss out on any of our content. Thank you very much for watching this video. You are blessed. <laughs>